Uh, how's it going, Sam? Good, Josh. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, good. Thank you. And thank you very much for taking the time to talk about the film. Got to watch it this weekend. And something I really loved was that diehard John McClane sort of feel to your character. This one guy being put through the ringer, getting more and more beat up as he goes along. What was fun for you to explore about that? Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I think um, certainly the the writer Lawrence Malcolm he he uh, he did he did look at Die Hard and, and and that sort of whole theme. And I guess also it's got elements of Bourne uh, and James Bond in it as well. Um, but yeah, I think for me the real draw was that the fact that it's very authentic. You know, that that it, it's based on Andy McNabb. It's based on his experiences. Obviously, it's fiction, but um, in, in a very real world and and. Uh, it's kind of scary to see, you know, how how these uh, mercenaries in the military operate uh, around the sort of gray areas. Um, but yeah, he he was the, really for me the draw. You know, he's I knew of him through Bravo to Zero and through his books, and to to meet the man and get access to him was just uh, incredible. I can imagine, and of course, we know that the SAS are the best at what they do. So for you, what sort of training and preparation did you have to do to make sure you could convincingly portray? This special forces guy and have it come across as, as realistic as it does in the film i mean for sure you know great amount of respect to them and, and to everything they do and i spoke well i spoke not only with andy who obviously was a great fountain of, of knowledge but to a couple of um ex-special forces uh, um, uh operators and i worked you know the, the military side the tactical side did a lot of working with drills and weapons um in south africa um and then with andy himself he did a lot of work um in an airsoft place working on tactical movement and clearing out compounds working with civilians etc so it really was um as much as i could sort of fit in um to give me sort of a i guess a, a basis or a grounding in in that world but he he was such a an amazing fountain of knowledge and uh, advice um, and really, you know, the SAS, they, they work as a team and they're only as strong as your weakest link. And I think um, that was kind of intriguing to see how they work together. Yeah, and on a slightly different note for a second, I know that you know that there are a lot of fans out there who would like to see you play Wolverine. And you've joked about it in the past. Um, but oh. is that a role that you would seriously consider if Marvel ever came calling? Wow. Damn, I'd have to start growing some hair. I'm not sure I have the full beard for that, but... Um, I, I mean, I haven't actually ever really thought about it, but uh, certainly love to 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 be um, in something as popular as that, and you know, a superhero would be really cool. Um, so yeah, it would be would be fun. But I think you know, Tom Buckingham is is kind of a superhuman in his own right. Absolutely, and and on that note, we see him get to do some incredible stunts. But something, without getting into spoilers, that stood out to me was your fight with Ruby Rose's character. What was it like for the two of you to shoot that? Because things get very brutal and it looks like the pair of you actually did a lot of your own stunts there. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we obviously Ruby's done a lot of um, action herself and um, we were we wanted that fight to be different to the other ones in, in the movie. You know, I mean, Tom goes through a lot, um, but this one was really was supposed to be as, as vicious and brutal uh, and, and lethal as possible. You know, they are trying to stop the other one, but they have both got great skills. So. Um, you know, the size difference was interesting. You know, how does a, a woman that's sort of smaller in size and stature uh, fight someone of my size? But, um, you know, she's she's vicious. So we did do a lot of that. And it was, you know, freezing cold and it was snowing. And I think, honestly, it's an incredible sequence. And, and I love that, that that portion of the movie. Yeah, one final very quick question for you. I know it's always hard to say before a film comes out, but it does feel like SAS Red Notice has some serious franchise potential. So if you do get to come back, where would you like to see Tom's story go next? Yeah, I mean, I think we all would love to see it come back. And I think it, it only just starts the journey, really. You know, Tom has this discovery about who he is and what his condition is. Um, so I think it would be cool to, to then see Tom, um, you know, explore you know, what it is to be a, a good psychopath and what he does with that that uh, information and it gives him, you know, I guess more power. Um, and Declan is still out there. So yeah, there's definitely room for a, a franchise, I think. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Sam. Really enjoyed the film and loved your work and hope we get to speak again soon. Uh, thanks, Joss. Awesome, mate.